Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. Joining us tonight, we have Cameron Copperthwaite, who's recently appeared in Dahmer, which is on Netflix, and American Horror Stories. Cameron, thank you so much for being our guest tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, have me on the show. That's a pleasure, man. You, I mean, I, we have some stuff to talk about, and let's get started. I know. With- it's been a good year so far. <laughs> get, yeah. Let's let's start with Dama, okay? You play Stephen Hicks. Um, yes. Wow. Jeffrey Dahmer's first victim back in 1978. Mm-hmm. For people that have seen the show and they're trying to place Cameron because he looked com- a little bit different, put him back in the 70s. Longer yeah, hair. hair. Yeah. That, that was my real hair, by the way. It was? <laughs> it was my real hair. I, I feel great that it's like immortalized on screen. Because that... I, I, once I cut it, I, I, I was like, I'm never going to do this again. So I'm <laughs> glad that there's a, a moment of it on there. That is so cool. I would have bet money that was like add-ons. But anyway, like we said, <laughs> Stephen Hicks was Jeffrey Dahmer's first murder victim. Uh, it's... Mm-hmm. It's the when fantasy for him turned into reality. Uh, yeah. Did Netflix provide consultants on the set for you to sort of uh, guide you through, or were you guys left on your own to do your own research? Uh, I, I there's so much in the script. A lot of the t- like you can tell that there's so much that has gone into the writing of it that allows you to get enough context clues to kind of do it on your own. And I think, you know, Netflix was always there. So were the directors and the producers and the writers as a resource. But part of my favorite thing about acting is doing the research. So I I always seem to come to set with the answers I need for the for for the most part. Um, I actually did enough of a deep dive. It was kind of spooky. I I had done research on on Steven and tried to place where he was from and 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 do as much research as I could and I actually found a grainy VHS recording of the Pegasus concert he was on his way to wow before he encountered Jeff I saw that I basically got to watch the show he never got to see it was spooky that it was is surreal, but spooky. it was very helpful yeah wow now how did you approach the role knowing that it was such a A pivotal moment for Jeffrey Dahmer, like I said, reality had, you know, fantasy had turned into reality for him. You were the one, I mean, Stephen was the one that made him cross that line that that, that there was never coming any back, you know, coming back from. How did you approach it? I I did my best to be as prepared as possible in the sense that I didn't know, you know, what was going to happen. I think sometimes... You can have an idea of what these scenes are going to be like, but once you get there, and I was lucky that I had worked with Evan before on American Horror Story, mm-hmm. so I kind of knew the way he worked. And because it's you know such a pivotal moment for Jeff, you're kind of letting him take the lead and just being prepared and, and present enough to just follow where he goes. And we actually did a lot of improv and went off script a lot. And we shot that scene over like, two days day and a half maybe so there was a lot that didn't make it in the the final the final product but so much was explored on the day and i kind of just did my best to just let go Mm -hmm. i think i at first i wanted it to be this this thing that i had prepared in my mind and then after after the first take with evan who was just brilliant i was like you know what fuck all that i'm gonna go over here now so i i just kind of let it be what it was and existed on the day well it worked now evan peters you said it did such an amazing job as Dahmer. yeah uh but when you guys were in the middle of your scenes shooting it mm-hmm. he's jeffrey Dahmer. you're stephen hicks what were you feeling in the middle of those shoots it was the most intense day i think i've ever had on a set wow. like everybody knew i think the fact that this was all true that you know these scenes are heavy normally but i think everybody was aware that because this is so true and so horrible there's like an extra weight to it so everyone was just dialed to 11 and it was it was hard you know because evan evan's a friend and you know he's putting himself through it to get to get the scene and the energy right that, that he feels you know was needed for the performance and i'm trying to do the same thing and 
it's heavy, man. Like, like you, you, you shoot all this stuff and then you go to lunch and you're just like, so. Yeah. What did just happen? Like? What? Yeah, what just know, it's, happened? It's, it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around it. Sometimes I, I even in talking about it, I have so many moments of being like, man, I, I watched the episode. I was like, I don't remember that. Like you almost like black it out or happens yeah. too quickly. But the energy was, it's exactly what everybody saw on the show. Like the, I remember feeling that emotion on the day and then watching the show it was just as sickening as it felt when yeah. we were filming it, it was- now did you guys feel both you and evan feel a, a, just a, a little bit of responsibility to get it right you know what i mean not you know yeah. for not, the story is called Dahmer, but you know it's the victims you know for the victims their families uh Mm -hmm. even for jeffrey dahmer i mean just to get it as accurately as you possibly can did you feel that responsibility yeah i think everybody did you know because the the ryan had done such a great job of of preserving the point of view and making sure that they weren't glorifying a a serial killer who had done all these horrible things but really just kind of present the 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 story from a place of you know in watching it and even in doing it i felt like i spent a lot of time wondering about the lives these people would have had had they not met jeff yeah you know there there there's this there's this like perpetual thought that kept coming up for me of like what the future would have been like and mm-hmm. i think that that really does lend itself to the performance and making sure that you're deliberate in trying to preserve a personality that feels so alive because they were in their own individual way everybody had their own dream and path and and it was taken away and i think that knowing that you do your best to to try to just bring as much as you can and as much heart as you can because your heart breaks for the people that were involved now that struggle scene between you and uh evan uh this was his first kill uh did evan try to you know because serial killer this is his first time from what we know about serial killers watching true crime documentaries or whatnot they they refine their whatever as they go along did he try to capture like he didn't know what he was doing the first time around And it was interesting on the day because we had rehearsed it and there was actually no rehearse. There was, there was a, the struggle wasn't written into the script. And on the day, you know, I think it just came over both of us as we were filming that, that I wouldn't like you just as a human being, when you put yourself in that situation, I think I didn't plan to, innately fight back but when he comes over your Mm -hmm. instinct that animal instinct like is to claw and and with every fiber of your being try to get away and the director was so brilliant because he had set up these shots a different way and when he saw what evan and i were doing and kind of coming up with on the spot he completely flipped the way he started to film the scene and, and started lopping some stuff off handheld and was like kind of adapting in the moment as we were adapting in the moment, which I just remember being like, holy shit, these people are so talented, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it was you guys the whole way. There were no stunt people involved. Yeah, just us. Okay. I did. I, I was very like, I was very adamant about doing my own stunts because I wanted everything to be captured in frame that could be captured in frame. And I felt like it was important to the story to be able to kind of feel these things, especially in the performance of it. And, and they let me do it. Thank God. (laughs) Now, uh, after you were done and you were done and you left the set, did you Mm -hmm. experience any emotions that you were not, counting on you weren't expecting to happen after you were like left the set like yeah i think you just you just kind of carry that like ugliness with you a little bit you got Mm -hmm. you i i do my best knowing how dark this stuff is to give myself an out as an actor whether it's a comedy special or a song or something that can pull you from the threads of you know essentially emotional depression or emotional release yeah and uh uh you definitely feel that it was it was i i only shot like five days 
I think like a, like maybe a, yeah, like a week, five days. And it felt like I had been there for like a year. Yeah. Cause it's so heavy. Yeah. I, you know, I was surprised when, uh, when the show first premiered and I looked at the, uh, amount of episodes, I'm like, wow, 10 episodes. I'm I like, know. Yeah. I actually texted, I texted Evan the other day and I was like, Hey, are you okay? You know, just to check in, you know, the, 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 cause I, I thought the same thing. I literally was like, Oh my God, this is so many hours and hours and hours and hours uh-huh. and weeks and months of, of being in this headspace. And, and, you know, he seems to be good. He's got a good outlet for everything. And, and, uh, it's really mesmerizing to watch. He's truly a pro. Before we get on to American Horror Stories, I just want to say one thing about Evan Peters. I think he deserves some kind of award recognition for this role. I do too. I I I I was like, the only time I've seen the eyes of the individual change because we've seen like people put on weight or take off weight, mm-hmm. you know, or change their 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 bodies or put on prosthetics to look like certain characters, but like their eyes are still there, you know. Mm-hmm. That is still so-and-so's eyes the only performances in in my recollection or like most recent recollection was heath ledger's joker was like gone and then when i saw evan in this it's just dull yeah like this this sad dullness that i was like that's just not him yeah and i agree i think like that is haunting and he carried the same emotions no matter what he was doing and that was yeah. just just that's just crazy so let's go I agree to, with you 100 percent. so let's go to american horror stories now you play charlie yeah. in the episode yeah. necro we just finished this past season which was season mm-hmm. number two uh this was yep. a, this was a return to the american horror story franchise for you it was. Uh, you played in the uh, cult with evan I peter did. yeah who had Evan Peters, who had the leading role in that. You played mm-hmm. Speedwagon, one of his followers. Yeah. With uh, Now, <laughs> what were your feelings to return to the franchise, first off? I, elated, you know. I like the, That show is built solely for the fans because of the fans. Like, the American Horror Story fans are one of a kind. It feels like they're almost in the zeitgeist of, like, Star Wars fans yeah. or, you know, Marvel fans. Like, people love that show oh, and those yeah. characters and the world that's been built so one being in it was amazing two returning to it was uh, outstanding because you're also like ryan murphy is so loyal and so built on people who want to be there and work really hard so you see a lot of the same people that are jumping from show to show so to go back on american horror stories like my writer, the writer Crystal, who did such a phenomenal job with Necro, was the writer on Cult. So like I hadn't seen her in four years, but like you're like, oh my god, yeah. how are you? It's like a summer camp catch up, honestly. Yeah, Ryan Murphy, you could tell. I mean, he has his his actors that he loves working with, and uh, he trusts, and I think that's why you know. I mean. Dahmer was a Ryan Murphy show and, you know, American Horror Stories. And he brought you from American Horror Story to Dahmer, Evan Peters over. Now, Necro was probably my favorite episode from this past season. No Um, way, really? Yeah, it really, really was. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Now, you. you play Charlie. Now, when you first read through Charlie, who is a very bizarre character we're going to talk about him more in depth but what were your thoughts on this guy when you read about when you read the script well i mean the moment you download the pdf and you see that the title is necro (laughs) you're like oh my god like you you know your palms are already sweating before you turn to page one because you're like what (laughs) what (laughs) what is what are they going to do because they're always the american horror story team is always pushing envelopes yeah so i had this expectation in my mind that it was going to be what the title was going to be and then as i read through it i was pleasantly surprised at how character driven and how romeo and juliet and shakespearean the characters were like Mm -hmm. it's almost a really fucked up like romeo and juliet kind of scenario um even down to the the poetic ending exactly um and I, I think that, that that was invigorating. I was so excited to participate in like that version of it. 
that was kind of carefully curated and there was nuance to it. And I was just very grateful to, to get to say these words, you know? Now, uh, we hear Charlie's story about being the lone survivor in a family car crash. Do you <clears throat> think he is suffering from a severe case of survivor's guilt? At first I did. And, and, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about it because I, you know, American Horror Story, like a lot of the dark horror things that go on, like there's so much death involved, but death is not normally the subject. Exactly. And in Necro, death is the subject. The characters spend a lot of time talking about all these different rituals from different walks of life or different cultural backgrounds. And I was like, wow, we don't really have like the language that some of these other cultures have to explain or talk about death in the way that isn't like incredibly sad. And I found that it was actually at first I was like, Oh, you know, he feels bad about this. But then I just thought he, I think he's just curious as to which of the beliefs really exist. I feel like mm -hmm. it's almost a way of coping with, with loss and with grief because it's such a weird thing to have to deal with. And we are like, I think we as, the society don't really feel very comfortable talking about it and it, it kind of presented itself in 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 my life in a, in a place where i was like wow this is it's okay to bring these things up and it's okay to feel these things and be curious and wonder and hopeful i actually thought that it was kind of an awe-inspiring outlook that charlie had that kind of like hit me in the heart you know yeah he wasn't uh inhibited to be you know not yeah exactly in, fit into normal society now yeah. uh the trick madison eisman is your mm -hmm. scene partner throughout the whole yeah, show she's fantastic she was fantastic and you guys she's had fantastic. great chemistry on set thank you uh the trick though that your character plays on sam in the mortuary is um uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty cruel, okay? I know it is. I know he it has is. his reasons. He wants to bring out what she what he thinks she's faking, which she is. She is mm -hmm. faking a normal life when she's not. She's faking normal. it basic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you rationalize what Charlie did? When you were reading that scene and that you know in your character, how did you rationalize what he did? I I I I tried my best because it. I agree with you on the page and as a person, like I would, I would never, yeah. you know. But like, I don't think any of us would yeah. do that. But I, I tried to just go back in time, uh, uh, you know, and try to make it as relatable as I could. And I thought, like, man, what drives this? And I was like, you know what? Charlie has probably never been in love before, because everybody remembers their first love and mm -hmm. how fucking insane and passionate those relationships are. I mean, I've, I went to, to college, uh, uh, I, I'm from Delaware and I went to college at Syracuse university and I was at Syracuse university for 36 hours before I dropped out of the school and enrolled myself in a college in Delaware before telling my parents after they had just dropped me off so that I could be closer to my girlfriend who I didn't <laughs> want to leave behind. And when you're 18, you're like, this is the most romantic thing anybody mm -hmm. has ever done. And it's going to work out and be great. And we didn't make it, but yeah. I, you know, I made great friends along the way and I don't regret the decision, but I do remember being like, you will do anything. Exactly. If you are that, oh, like if you are that lustful and, and, and you don't have the maturity to have been through that type of relationship before, I think we do crazy things. For Absolutely. Love. Now, Madison, again, she was phenomenal. What was it like working opposite Madison? I mean, what was she, she's great. I mean, she is so giving and so present and so different take to take, you know, she's really trying things on and that, that makes you want to like keep up with her. And she's just in this tennis match with you hitting uh, uh, the ball back and forth, left, right, kind of making you 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 chase after this scene. She's always such a good driver in these scenes, um, and I was doing my best to just to just keep up with her. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, it was really a treat. I've been a fan of hers for for a while because we have some mutual friends, and with COVID, hadn't had the opportunity to meet. 
So I got to walk on set and be like, I know all of your friends. Oh, they're my friends too. And it was, <laughs> it was kind of a good icebreaker so that we can kind of get right into the, the nitty gritty of it. But she was, it was such a blessing because that's that sequence in the grave at the end, the sequence in the, the mortuary, oh, yeah. some of these scenes with all of this dialogue, like it's hard to do. And to, I was, I was like, every day I would go home and be like, Oh my God, thank God it's with Madison. Thank God. <laughs> and that ending, I mean, just, it was beautiful. Like you said, it was Romeo and yeah, Juliet. It's horribly poetic. She shoots you, pulls you into the grave and you don't resist. You don't try to get out. You know, she the the dirt starts filling you guys up, and you're yeah. gonna be love and you know embraced forever. You know, supposedly, mm-hmm. till the police yep. find you missing, and then they dig you up. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cameron, I want to thank Until you. Until the after credit sequence. <laughs> exactly, Cameron. I want to thank you so much. That was this was a brilliant chat. Uh, you're, no, this was fantastic. I thank you again for having me on the yeah. show. I'm a huge fan, and it's been an honor to be here. Absolutely, and you have a lot of stuff coming up. You're like a star that's just going to keep on rising. We're looking forward to a lot I of good stuff. I appreciate that so much. Coming from blush. you. Uh, I want to thank our audience, those who are tuning in live, and those who will be watching this later on. On behalf of Cameron Copperthwaite and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye.